Hi, greetings and welcome back. Uh, this is the final part now of the folk fishing series. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Um, I was rambling on a little bit on the last one, uh, but let's hope I can do a little bit better on this uh, on the last uh, section. Right, basically, uh, we've gone through the still water uh, pole floats in the last section. Prior to that, of course, we were talking about running water floats uh, and then stick floats and wagglers. So this uh, end of the series now, we're talking about uh, the rest of the still water floats plus um, some commercial pole floats. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually uh, talk a little bit about some oddity type of uh, floats. Um, the one in, in particular that I'm talking about at the moment, this is um, just making one up, up actually. It's uh, a wire stem and bristle float and I call it the balsa bloodworm pole float. In fact, um, it is so sensitive that you actually need grease on the bristle, uh, obviously to keep it uh, suspended above the water surface. So you've got the skin of the water just holding it. Now this float is perfect for a very shy biting fish and also bloodworm fishing in particular. I call it the, the, the bloodworm pole float. Yes, the, uh, the, the float was actually presented to me and uh, explained by uh, the French captain, Philippe Perrepoint. Um, he was a French manager at the time uh, and he called it the, the Total Bloodworm Fishing Float, um, as I said. And uh, he first showed it to me in 1986. And he said it, they use it for like lifting the bloodworm off the bottom. Uh, you know, and so it's so sensitive, as I said, and it works um, fantastically well in the water. Uh, of course, this day and age, we don't use bloodworm so much, so these sort of floats probably uh, are not as popular as they perhaps were. Uh, there's another float as well, very similar. I know this one uh, was really like a whip or a pole to hand one. Again, with a bristle, uh, metal bristle tip, metal stem just on the bottom, and this one we use basically for fishing to hand uh, on a whip. Again, you know. But these are very sensitive floats that uh, probably are a bit redundant now. We probably don't use them so much these days. Okay, now I'm going to show you a, a float which uh, is the ac actual opposite of that, and that's uh, what we call an all balsa pole float. Uh, it's shaped in a, a elongated pair, but with a, you know, it's balsa all the way through, and basically it's very buoyant. Now we use this on uh, canals, for dragging the bottom. Uh, again, uh, this was a very popular float once uh, uh, when we fished the canal matches. And um, as I say, uh, what you do with this, the shot in, on this is quite simple. You just put a, a string of shots so it, they just sort of um, hold onto the bottom. And when you get a toe, uh, you get this effect where it's just dragging. And then when you get a bite, of course, it, off it goes. Um, that's another float where you stem, give it the stability. Um, and that's uh, that's another oddity, which uh, it's probably still got its purposes even today. Okay, here's another float that uh, you may not have seen. We call it a matchstick float. Uh, almost like a matchstick. <laughs> now, the application on this is quite interesting because uh, you can either use it on a canal, you know, on still water, or sometimes you can use it on a river and I, I use it on a river to great effect uh, going back uh, a few years ago I was fishing the Warwick Raven um, and it was uh, a Twyford and I never forget there was uh, quite a lot of fish there in them days and I was catching uh, well I was catching a few fish on the waggler and then I started missing a lot of bites but uh, I could see them you know uh, these days bleak and uh, I think the chub they were all dimping on the top and uh, I thought well how can I catch these so anyway I thought of an idea I had a, one of these uh, floats in my box and I thought right I'll short line it on the pole you know fishing at 14 meters and see if I can catch them on the, on the surface and so what I done I set it up at about um, I think it was about yeah about 18 inches and I held it against the flow so what that meant is because the float was so light and um, 
the shot in uh, the shots below it was so light it was actually uh, pushing it up to the surface and I ended up catching these fish you know because I tried the waggler and I was missing bites on it and I went on this and it, it worked a treat um yeah there's a diagram there she's holding it holding the flow back on this on the flow and it catches the fish on the surface but also the um canals that's that's the shot impact on the canal and there's a couple of diagrams there they come to different shapes i mean this is just a straight uh, forward matchstick shape but you can shape it so it tapers off as well so yeah that's another float which uh, you know definitely worth sort of uh, knowing about you know in case you ever use that uh, if you want to catch up in order uh, another pole float uh, i call it the polywag um no, you can either get them in peacock or, in my case, I use the small Drennan crystal ones. As I said before, they're like a bubble. Uh, I never get um, the time I used one of these was on the Gloucester Canal, uh, catching bleak and um, you know catching fish under the surface. Then I fished the Oxford Canal in a, a Division National, and I never forget. I had to get right across the far bank under some bushes uh, to see you know to try and catch the, the couple of chub there anyway i had a few i had six pound of them and i just missed out on the uh on the main prizes i'd, I'd come about 12th in a in a thousand pegger you know using a little polywag what i call a polywag on the pole so another great method you know something else worth definitely worth having and here's another waggler that uh, uh, it's a very sensitive waggler for, for basically fishing with a pole. I get, again, it's uh, you know I, I I do sell them. I, I actually brought them back from Thailand, but they're marvelous little floats. Very very sensitive, you know. Um, nylon long line of bristle, ideal for hemp fishing or you know sm small bait fishing anyway. All right, another float. I'm going to, another float. I'm going to show you um, a funny float. <laughs> it's called a funny float. Um, it was coined a phrase by uh, some lads from Oxford Way. Uh, in my younger gen, uh, years, I used to travel uh, with uh, a company called Steadfast Fish and Tackle, and I used to call in a few shops. And I uh, called into a shop in Oxford, and you know, them days are always listening, always learning. And um, I talked to a couple of lads there, and they were saying that um, they designed a float called a funny float. Now, when I uh, actually saw it, I thought, oh, <laughs> it does look funny to actually look at. But there you are, there's one there. Uh, basically, you've got your, your, um, your body, pear-shaped, or more of an oval shape. Then you've got a thick stem, and then you've got, you've got your bristle. And they come in different sizes, usually with a little bit of metal uh, uh, base to it, to give it a bit of stability. Now, how these work uh, is quite interesting, really, because it was in the bloodworm days, uh, and they work even today. You know, if you're fishing squat or pinky off the bottom, basically you, the, the eye is on the body, and what you do, you shot it down to the bristle, and when you pull with the pole, it lifts up out of the water. Consequently, bringing the, the bloodworm or the squat or the pinky off the bottom, uh, you know, by about three or four inches. And when you release it, obviously the float settles and the bait settles in the water. So you're constantly working the float. And it works extremely well when you've got a bit of a drift or, or when the canal's moving slightly. So they, they coined the phrase the, the funny float. And as I said, uh, quite interesting. Uh, I haven't used them for a long, long time, but I remember fishing on the Kennet and Avon once with them, and uh, they certainly caught fish then. So that's another one. <laughs> now, next one I'm going to show you. <clears throat> um, use this with a whip, basically, and it's called an Italian whip float. As you can see by the shape, it's actually uh, tapered off, fine on the bottom and, f and quite thicker on the top. And uh, you know, that's a larger one there. That's for the big rivers, for the River Y. Um, now these I use uh, for bleak fishing. Uh, you can use them on uh, canals or any type of uh, whip fishing. 
Um, you could use them on a pole, of course, but uh, mainly for the whip. Um, I first learned about these floats when I was in Italy, and I got very friendly with uh, one of the Italian uh, internationals. Um, oh, I'll tell you his name. It was in, um, let me see. Yeah, his name was Emilio uh, Hugo, and he showed me uh, basically how they fish this float. Um, they were catching small roach, bleak, and sunfish, and they were catching five or six a minute on them. They were so uh, quick and proficient. And um, it's interesting because the shotting pattern is unlike uh, we ever see in this country. Um, it's a bulk with about 20 small number 12s below the bulk. I'll leave, I'll leave a diagram to show you. But uh, it's fantastic because it's almost um, untangable. You know, I'm not saying they can tangle, but the way they fished it with the bulk down, a bit of cloud, and they were whipping these uh, bleak out like you wouldn't believe. Of course, where we fish it, uh, on the on the river Y, uh, we fish it basically uh, a little bit like the commercials do with the uh, couple of uh, number eights down, well, four or five number eights, and splash it on the surface with, with the float, and that creates a, a disturbance on the top, and the bleak home in on it. So sometimes you can catch bleak, uh, as I say, five or six a minute, using that method, very shallow, uh, by slapping the water with it. Uh, you know, 30, 40 pounds quite regular, you know, using this, uh, using this float. So there we are, that's another one. Uh, definitely worth having. Italian whip float. It's on the website or in the manual. Okay, last but not least of the uh, still water pole floats. And uh, now this one again, it's you. You can use it on still water, but also on running water. And I, I, I named it the hemp even hemp float. Okay, so you can see it's a kind of decanter body, and that one there, but very very fine fiberglass going right through and, and carbon stem, and basically. That is so sensitive, and um, that's what we catch hemp, uh, you know, roach on the hemp with. Fantastic floats. Anyway, again, the uh, description is on the website, and also the diagram on how to shot these. Because what you do, you you only put number tens and twelves down the line, and you run it, you run it through the uh, natural flow. And because they're so light, they will pick up any flow at all in the water which is what you want you want to the bait as natural as possible when you're fishing uh, with with um, hemp on the river so there you are two more floats <laughs> so there you are as you can see there's a huge range of various floats uh, they are designed for specific type of uh, conditions and certain type of fish as i say at the end of the day it's all down to practice hope oh, that you've learned a little bit, uh, as I say, with these still water pole floats. Now I'll be talking about commercial, a uh, couple of commercial floats that uh, I've developed. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm just changing my glasses. Uh, a new pair of glasses so uh, anyway um right that concludes most of the pole floats now the only thing to talk about now of course is the uh commercial floats now uh, so as i said commercial fisheries uh, and commercial floats are relatively new in our angling history um it was only a couple of decades ago uh, that i first witnessed uh, the introduction of um, commercial fishing. Um, it was Morland's farm down at Hartlebury near Worcestershire. I think John Talbot was the owner and um, he had the visions of stocking the fishery with hard fighting and quick growing carp. Uh, soon, you know, the word spread throughout the country and anglers all over the, would come and experience commercial fishing. Um, soon after, uh, there were others sprang up possibly before, possibly after, I don't know, but uh, Billy Makins, for example, Mallory Park, uh, you know, just a few 
to mention that, that um, you know that come to mind. Um, most of the species stocked were with carp, and then um, suddenly a new type of fish was being introduced. Um, it was a designer fish, basically uh, a, a cross between, um, uh, I suppose, uh, a common carp and, uh, and, a, and a goldfish or a crucian, but they called them F1 carp. Uh, anyway, suddenly this new type of uh, fishing, um, as I said, uh, was introduced and um, it attracted a lot of anglers to uh, that type of fishing. Um, anyway, so float fishing combined with stronger pole tactics and, uh, and you know, obviously floats uh, came into being. And, you know, that included uh, margin fishing, surface fishing, paste and pellet fishing. Um, and whereby, you know, the normal floats, they just couldn't cope with the wear and tear, as I said, of uh, the standard pole floats. But anyway, these hard-hitting fish, uh, the floats had to be developed to withstand the rigours and the huge fishing weights uh, of these new tactics. So, as I said, you know, new floats come on the market. Now, the tactics uh, obviously used uh, are very similar to uh, the commercial pole floats, the way they react in the water. And of course, um, a lot of practice and, uh, you know, uh, is needed. And also, to, to I developed um, a small range of commercial floats that I believe uh, would cover most of the fishing that we that uh, the commercial anglers fish. Uh, I had fished uh, a couple of commercials myself and uh, a little bit of success. Although natural fishing is my uh, forte, you know. Uh, anyway, when I make these commercial floats, I have to make them very robust and uh, they have to have a high density foam. Sometimes I use balsa, uh, tough sprung eyes on the top, and also uh, materials uh, like carbon uh, and, and cane. Anyway, as I said, combining all my experience of float fishing uh, over the years, uh, I've adapted the commercial range. And therefore, you know, I'll um, you know, I'll just show you now. I'll start off with the paste float. Yeah, so I was saying with paste floats, this particular float was developed with fishing the paste in mind. A paste fishing, which is really made up of a ground pellet, uh, blended together in a, a doughy mix, you know, that could be moulded on the hook. Uh, what? The commercial anglers have found that some fish tend to filter feed in the swim. In other words, feed up the ground bait or the pellets that have been introduced into the swim. Now, this can normally be observed by masses of bubbles, you know, coming up from the bottom. And uh, quite often, you know, bream tench and carp, they produce this phenomenon, you know, because when they're engrossed in feeding on the bottom, sucking and blowing, uh, and feeding on the fine particles, you know, uh, obviously you can see the bubbles rise. Hence, the paste become a very good bait, which will catch fish when other baits don't. Now, anglers found that when using paste um, on the hook, setting the, sh the float uh, almost with no shots down the line, the paste would act as a weight and it would set the float in the water. Now, the, there is a long at antenna it comes with a float, and I'll show you the diagram now. Yeah, I'll just show you. As you can see, this float has got a very long antenna, which allows the the signal of a bite when the fish take the bait. If you look at this, the diagram, as you can see, there's no weight on the line. It's weighted just down, basically, uh, with with the weight of the the paste and of course when you get a bite the float will either go under or it will rise in the water yeah so as i said some of the floats actually uh you may have to put some shot uh, down the line but usually very little indeed uh, the secret in paste fishing is fishing it at de depth you know um so that uh, when the fish uh, sort of suck and blow it uh, the, the float will move and you do get a lot of uh, in my experience anyway you do get a lot of uh, missed bites on it so it's a sort of thing that you have to uh, if you like work on work at it 
Uh, I did have a success of winning a few matches down uh, in West Wales in Llanelli. Uh, there was a commercial uh, lake down there. And uh, I, what I'd done, I actually fished uh, almost pole to hand, but with a strong elastic. So that if I did miss a bite, you know, obviously the paste would come off and it would go in the water and that paste would become the ground bait, if you like. And anyway, it was so successful, I actually had some good weights. even wrote an article for one of the fishing magazines, um, you know, and showed how to do it. But there you are. Uh, if you want to know any more about it, leave me a message and I'll, I'll tell you the secret on it. Yeah, here's a couple of uh, paste floats. See the long, extra long bristle to them? Of course, this allows, as you say, the uh, the paste to settle in the water. And what you find is the paste disintegrates. It actually comes up slightly in the water. But of course, when you get a bite, it'll come right out the water or just shoot under. Okay, so that's the paste float. Uh, the next most popular float, uh, I, I suppose, is the margin float. Uh, I'll show you to you there. Now, with the margin float, it's a tough, tough old float, obviously carbon. You know, it's quite a, got quite a big bristle to it. Um, usually a round uh, pear shape or round uh, body. And the reason why uh, this particular float is, is particularly uh, popular is the fact that a lot of people catch fish, what we call down the margins. That's just, you know, between the grass and, and the, the, the bank, uh, which goes in deeper, as I, as I said, in the swim. What you find is that uh, fish quite often come in the margins, especially later on in the day. So, uh, as I say, it's usually a second resort when people fish out for the first, say, an hour or two, and then come in in margins. And normally you can see uh, the carp milling around. You know, you see the, the rushes moving or you, you see a bit of movement. And the secret is, is obviously just keep throwing a uh, little bit of bait there every uh, every couple of minutes. Uh, and keep an eye out for them and then the margin float then comes into its own the shotting pattern is quite simple it's um, a couple of maybe a couple of uh, eights or tens down and then again you can use paste or you can use corn or pellet and uh, i find that um, this particular float uh, because of the strong fighting robust fish what i have done in and i've noticed a couple of other companies in the actual body itself, they they form a groove, so that the line fits in between the groove of the body, because uh, otherwise the constant pressure of you know catching like hundred pound bags of uh, carp uh, will the line will cut into the body. But make, making a groove in the body, then uh, that eliminates it. Yeah, here's one that uh, I recently just been making. Now, uh, if I can show you, uh, there we are. There's the groove. So basically, the line uh, will go down through the groove. So then the line won't damage the body in in uh, in great excess like it would if it was just a standard body. So that's a little tip for anyone who, of the uh, people who are making floats. Okay, now I'm going to talk about another float, which is down, what we call down the shelf float. Uh, so uh, that's slightly deeper than the margins. This is where uh, you go into the main lake. And uh, basically, it's a very strong, sturdy float, carbon stem, uh, big bristle, obviously, you know. Then this, these are ideal for fishing the, uh, the meat, corn, you know, worm. And uh, as I say, it's, it's basically uh, a very strong, robust float. Uh, this one's camouflaged, but uh, they come in uh, various sizes from, uh, you know, uh, four sixteenths up to gram, gram and a half, as I say. And uh, this uh, body, as I said, it's basically like a uh, pear shape, and that'll hold m m the, uh, that'll work in the majority of swims. So that's the next one. I'll just quickly show you a quick diagram because. I try to keep this as simple as possible, just two shots down, you know, um, you don't need to put a bulk because uh, you don't want to get line bites. Okay. As I said, so all the diagrams are in the, the complete float fishing manual.
£14.95. Just um, this is a uh, an order for a customer, this one. So uh, if you want one, let me know. Now, although I've already mentioned about the groove in a float, uh, a latest development of what we call inline floats. And this one in particular, I'll show you a diagram. There's been a hole bored through the middle of the, the body itself. And the reason being, of course, is, you know, when you're hooking like five, six, seven pound cap or even double figure cap, uh, the line will, you know, damage the floats generally, but with the inline, um, then it won't because uh, the line is actually running through the, the body of the float. And some say that it, it also uh, sits better on the line, you know, so as I said, uh, because generally a lot of these spring eyes can either pop out or pop up where an inline body uh, obviously, the line uh, is a bit more uh, sturdy, if you like. Uh, another diagram there. A lot of these are used, as I said, down the margins uh, and also down the shelf. So, again, that's uh, um, another very good float. Another float, um, a commercial float, is what we call a diamond body. Now, this is ideal for, uh, for fishing sort of up in the water. Uh, how it actually works because of the diamond shape on the body. Uh, see if I got one to show you. Okay, so there you go, there's the diamond shape. And the reason why we use these is basically because of the rotation of the body on the surface of the water. So, as you can imagine, once you lay your, uh, your shots out on your bait, um, the float starts like that, and as it sinks, it starts to correct itself in the water and the idea is of course is that when you do get a bite and it's sort of on the uh, on the drop then uh, obviously it'll just shoot away <laughs> there's a diagram to show you uh, basically how it works so what we call a self-rotating body um, diamond shape hi uh, I'm going to show you another float now that um, that I was asked to make and it's uh, basically a dibber uh, and um, these dibbers, if you look at that, these were made specifically uh, with a little bit extra length in the wire. Um, and you thread it by uh, putting a needle, hot needle, through the, the, the body uh, so it becomes like an inline float. Uh, and these for fish are for fishing up in the water uh, for F1 and carp. And the idea is, of course, is that uh, you have a couple of little shots and you splash the water with it, um, obviously giving the effect as if you're uh, throwing your know, catapulted pellets in the water. And, uh, and you just do this a couple of times, and of course, the F1 is attracted to the surface. Um, so I made a batch of them for uh, a customer. As I say, but these are quite easy to make, polystyrene um, bodies. Um, you know, Okay, so those are the uh, majority of the body shapes that people use on commercials. As I say, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types to choose from. This is uh, just a bit of a selection I got. All commercial floats. <laughs> um, as I say, I don't fish them that much myself these days, uh, but uh, I certainly make the floats and obviously can adv advise you on the type of floats to use. Now, Last but not least, I'm going to go back to the old waggler, and this is what we call a commercial pellet waggler, and there's a couple there to show you. And basically, uh, if you've watched my other vlogs uh, on the river with like the trench and float, well, this is a very similar situation, except uh, because they're, they're very buoyant floats, uh, they have a dual uh, purpose in a sense because not only do they give you the weight to splash on the water to attract the fish to the sound, you know, uh, they also, uh, because of the buoyancy, they're almost like a self-hooking float. When the fish uh, obviously take the bait, then the buoyancy will actually help to uh, set the hook into the fish's mouth. As I say, and uh, these come in all different sizes. Uh, again, shot and pattern is quite simple. 
like like you would any there you are. like you would any wag there, there is a little tip um they use rubber stops on the line rather than the shots uh, and also uh, there's a little diagram there where you you put the rubber stop just a few inches up the line because that helps with um, the fish and the bites and the hook in the fish as I say um, so there you are fully illustrated in the catalog uh, in the catalog you also got all the shots capacities to help you out so there you are that concludes my uh, float fishing series as I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that uh, you've learned a, f a couple of things I may have missed a couple of things and there's always new techniques and, and advancements and developments coming on but uh, you know it's as I say uh, you never stop learning in fishing as I say anyway I hope you enjoyed it and um, please you know, rewind it and go over the you know certain parts of the videos and the, the series that you might want to recap on uh, any questions you can always send them to me email me or message me uh, on messenger or on facebook and of course go to my website www.goldmedalfloats.co.uk okay thank you very much for watching hope you come back again for those who haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe and share uh, leave a comment okay all the best. Bye.